Hey everybody, good day. My name is Kaneki. I come in the name of the Lord, and I hope you're having a great day on this blessed day that He has made for us. Uh, this talk, I just wanted to send some encouragement and a little bit of advice and maybe some truth, uh, maybe new perspectives on how to look at um, how the whole conceptualization about spiritual warfare and fighting evil, fighting the darkness, fighting Satan or the devil and the demons, yeah? Um, one thing that has kind of like occurred to me, and it, it might be something that you might have to ponder on for yourself, yeah? Is that the way that people have been taught to fight demons and fight evil and prayer and doing almost like exorcism type stuff, right? The only way that most of us would know how to do something like that is through an example of someone else, right? Um, in the Bible, whenever they have examples of Jesus Christ, like casting out demons into the flock of pigs, for, per se, or out of that the boy, um, it wasn't anything so dramatic as just a, his basic commands. It was just like, be gone out of him, just like real fast, boom, 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 right? And so it made me start thinking like, if his example is, is like that, and the way that people do it nowadays is nothing like that. Where has it gone kind of awkward, right? Like, it doesn't match no more. And so I was thinking, 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 and I was like, okay, so m I guarantee that majority has ta been taught or justified through this through um, somebody, through a movie. It had been like through the exorcism, the exorcist, during the time when Malachi Martin was really uh, a new concept and really big in, in America. And his whole thing was called the hostage to the devil. And it was about, it was shedding a large light on exorcisms. Yeah, and fighting, combating demons. That was Catholicism's way or whatever. But it was still that same concept to the whole entire body. And so with that, I was like, okay, so... I always believe, like, just like the rapture, right? A lot of people are being misinterpreted of it because they have, uh, it makes them think before they have time to think when they hear the word rapture. Where did they get that thought that was already there before they even had time to comprehend it and still go on that thought, which is not even theirs? And that was through movies, too. And what that is, is it, they take away their, your imagination, right? Something's already outside of yourself creating something that's spectacular. And I call that glamour, right? Like a glamour. That is also known as being charmed. You, you've been charmed into believing that that's the way it is, right? And I was um, reading through, and in the book of the wisdoms, it said, if the snake bites before, or the snake strikes before it is charmed, there's no benefit for the charmer. Like, that's pretty interesting sounding, right? And that got me thinking, like, okay, if it's not charmed, and then bites. It's is does that mean that it is impossible for it to be charmed again? Or if it's charmed, will it ever bite? Or if it's charmed and if it bites, is there still now still benefit for the charmer, even though it bit but it was charmed before? Do you see what I'm saying? And so with those three things, the last one really got my attention, okay? Like if it's if a snake is charmed and then bites is there still benefit for the charmer? That means there's benefit for the snake, even though it was charmed, right? Even though it was thinking before it had its own thought, it, so there was another will inside of it before it was willing its own truth, right? And so in that sense, I was thinking, and then it got me to thinking about, um, he will crush it, uh, he will strike your heel and you will crush his head type of thing, right? And, um, about the Israelites being plagued with poisonous snakes and then in order for them to be saved there was another golden snake that was charmed that crawled upon the staff of Aaron which on another note is in the Ark of the Covenant it budded it was a staff off a tree and it budded okay but this golden snake climbed up this staff and they were told to look upon it if they wanted to be healed and what's significant about that is they were being bit by snakes and poisoned and that was their complaints and their cry out to God for mercy and the very thing that would give them redemption, salvation and to be saved was a snake. So it's almost like a sword 
that just stabbed you mortally and you have to, you're going to bleed to death if you don't find a resolution, if you don't find anything to stop that bleeding. And the only thing that you find out that could kill you is the sword that stabbed you. You have to get it and put it back into the wound and it, you'll be healed. It's almost like that concept, right? And I was like, okay, so <laughs> looking at all of that and then looking at the nowadays perspectives of how to combat evil, okay? And the charming of the snake, okay? Charm is like enchantment. So what an enchantment does is it's something or somebody who vocalizes over and over again the same truth, the same word, the same type of melody, the same type of syllable, the same type of like diphthong, the same type of whatever, accent, everything, over and over again until it changes the way that you, who is not that person, your brain thinks. And what they do is they put that enchantment, that charm, that whatever it is, their truth that they want inside of your truth, your will, into your will. And then you don't know that it got mixed up. So what was there, what is there now, never used to be like that, but they were convinced, right? They convinced um, that whole thing to happen. That's what enchantments do. You know, they put a, they put a secret, they put their own secret inside of you and then put a veil over that it was even, it even happened. And that's the same thing as a charmer, um, someone who charms, right? Uh, in that sense, when it comes to fighting and combating the darkness, there's no way possible that you can combat it with yelling, screaming, and condemning it. Think about all the steps and processes that we have to learn to attain in our own personal walk as it's been taught about keeping peace, yet... We are over here keep trying to keep the peace and trying to be brotherly love and brotherly kindness. But when it comes to something that is not of human or of reality or something that is we've been taught is the enemy, uh, we learn to completely try to eradicate it and kill it and kill it and kill it, right? And one of the main concepts of that whole thing was when you're battling monsters, be careful not to come one, Yeah. So if you kill a monster, you can only kill a monster if you yourself become a monster kind of thing. Um, and a Holy Spirit has no discrimination. In the Bible, we read that there was an argument between Satan and Michael the Archangel over the body of Moses, okay? And it said that even Michael the Archangel, who was a prince of heaven, which is pretty awesome, uh, didn't fight the Satan like the way that we would think or how the paintings show Michael the Archangel like stabbing him in the head and spearing him in the head and stuff, okay? He said, the Lord rebuke you. He didn't even use, Michael the Archangel didn't even use his own power to rebuke this thing. He said, the Lord rebuke you. In that sense, there is a respect. There is a respectability to knowing that and accepting the bigger fact that Everything is in God's plan. Therefore, everything, no matter how crazy it may seem, it is for you to respect. In And respect is not only one way. There's so many degrees of how you can respect. And in that way, with Michael the Archangel, that's a good example of how you can respect something that is supposed to be vile, right? Instead of being like, I kill you, and I'm right, and you're wrong, and you're ugly. He just said, the, the one who has all of us, rebuke you. That is so respectable, and but still gets the point across. That's charming. That is him charming before Satan had a chance to strike. Do you see what I'm saying? And Satan being a fallen angel, who Michael the Archangel, if he's, you know, they probably know each other in heaven. That's what the way I like to think about it, right? If Satan was just an angel that fell and became evil, iniquitous, wicked, rebellious, then an angel is just, a demon is just a, a angel. Yeah, wait. And every demon has the potential to be an angel because every angel has the potential to be a demon. Do you see, see what I'm saying? But between that benefactor, is there something that can have devil horns with a halo on, right? 
or uh, yeah, or devil horns with wings. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like a not evil, but not good, but not all good, but not all evil. And as we know down here, no, n there's no, nobody who is good. There's nobody who is righteous ever, right? So, but we try to be good, but we're all we're, we're already children of the devil, pretty much, as it said. We're already condemned when we're born. And if that's not going to be for God, then it's against God, which is going to be the enemy, the devil. So we, there's somehow we are all metaphorically, uh, we have the potential to be either evil or good. And in that process, if there's no such thing as good, that means no person, you and I, can ever be evil. So there has to be, you know, a. Uh, angel wings with devil horns or angel halo with you know a pitchfork something like along those lines it's not neither bad or good like a hybrid like us like we're between the two and so in that sense when it comes to spiritual warfare and stuff you're supposed to love your enemies or else if you're fighting and combating like that you're being disrespectful to God himself to you are um, in dereliction of how you're supposed to be w walking your life about peace, love, and making a Holy Spirit that's non-discriminatory. And three, not trusting in the Lord. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, it compounds. There's there there was something wrong with the way that we were actioning it out because we were we were not charmed. Well, we were charmed by something else, and then we're striking. So it's benefiting something else that is outside. And I th it's benefiting the wrong thing. That's what I'm saying. And so, for example, like when I was young, I used to pray. And, I st and up until when I got older, if I prayed, I would always, I would pray things like, I pray that one day the devil and God will learn how to get along. You know, and like he'll forgive them and he'll ask for forgiveness or something. Like some along those we really out-of-the-box things that normal kids would never pray for but I'm not sure I bet, I bet a lot of kids prayed for that but just peace and uh, against the people who we thought was the the hero and the villain that they would become friends and then everything else between would work out kind of thing right um and then during my walk you know I was doing my all my things and whatever and learning about myself and questing for God and I wrote a song for God and it was called as I am you know and it's pretty much take me as I am in all of my imperfections kind of thing but there was a line in it that really uh surprised me when the lyrics came out and it said I've been lost and I've been found I've been cut so beat up uh, deep the scars still bleed I've been hurt been down the darkest roads but I made friends with my demons and God saved my soul you know I made friends with my demons like what like you don't do that right what happens is you are you don't delight in evil and when I say delight don't think about enjoyment that's true as well think about it just really plain and simple don't turn off your light in evil you know and that means if you go into a dark cave and with a flashlight don't turn off your flashlight because then you're gonna the moment it gets turned off you're gonna get confused in the darkness it's pitch black right but because you have a flashlight it is like a slice you can see where the beam of your flashlight goes and where the darkness is. And when it says love rejoices with the truth, what happens is you are the light going in, into the middle of the darkness and you remind the darkness that it too is light by not turning off your light and keeping to the percepts in perfect, in perfect order of just being respectful and loving even to the most vile and even to the most not vile. It's the same accordance every single, there's no discriminations between vileness almost, right? And so in that sense, what you, what you do is you maintain it and that darkness then chirps up and like, what is different about you? And then you remind them that they too once was angels. They too once was light. And then you have another light that sparks on and then you have two lights and then all of a sudden they'll cave that was pitch black with one light it's all light there's no darkness left and you don't know where your light started and it's like began or if it even has a starter and it's all together and that's what's called rejoicing 
And it can only happen when the light goes into the center of a darkness. If you are trying to eradicate darkness from the outside, you are not going to destroy it. It does nothing at all. You have to venture to the heart, right in the center, the hardest, scariest part for most people, yeah? And you, ira you uh, ira irradiate out. You radiate the beams out. So it goes up, down, left, right, all over, all in one spectrum. And you disperse the darkness from within in peaceful manners. And that's why, like I was saying, you can protect yourself and say a prayer, you know? But it... In the end, it's not about you uh, overcoming the devil. It's about you having your power to take yourself away from it and release yourself from a grasp kind of thing, right? You can unhook yourself because you have that power. And in that way, you let be... It's almost like you let be a portion of God's divine plan and work on your faith <laughs> and fulfill it because uh, even hearing me say that it's crazy why would you want to do that like no but it is that's how this type of thing works and in this sense you are then charming the snake and when it bites there's going to be great benefit for you do you see how it kind of works uh, think about when you yourself have a truth in you and someone else has a different, complete opposite truth. They could literally, they, you guys could sit, consider each other's enemies. The feelings that are of truth to me and to that person is of that same level and caliber. Like, you cannot be moved. Right? No matter what anyone says. But how can there be two truths? Like, how can two people be so founded into two separate truths? Is there two masters? No, there's only one. Is there more than one God? No, there's only one. Yeah? But many names. Like, there's one, but it comes through many... There's many ways. Until there's only one way now to the Father, which is through Jesus Christ as the anchor. Um, because that's how he actually decreed it. He made it that way. He glorified Jesus Christ. He didn't deify him. Everyone else got deified when Jesus Christ got glorified. Yeah? So, it's like that. And when you question the logic of, is there two truths? Can there be two masters? Why do we have that same feeling, yet we are enemies, but there's no way that you can find any resolution, or you cannot convert, yeah? Um... It's because you were bitten by the snake, right? But depending whether or not that snake was charmed is going to be your benefit. And that's why in my statement of the truth, just to kind of clarify and outside that hypocritical stance, like how can, like, you know, uh, all these people saying the truth, but you're saying that you're, the, you're saying the truth. I'm not saying they're wrong, but I'm saying that I am the ultimate truth. Then isn't that hypocritical of me? Yeah, it's definitely sound, the look, sound, smells, everything like that. But consider this. My truth that comes out of me and my test, because of the testimonies that I, I adhere to or that I have told and where I am now and doing this, I was bitten by a snake but I was already charmed and the people who get bitten by a snake but they're not charmed are the ones who don't get the benefit of the glorified God and they might get the benefit of the deified gods and if they're deified gods have benefits that don't that you cannot, they cannot get unless accorded and regulated to what the glorified God has made and ruled in a statement, then every other contract, whatever everyone else believes as a reward, the reaping of what they are sowing, is null and void. Like, that. It, that's why. 
like, um, I believed in those truths, the others, until I found this one. And this is the one that made sense. I wouldn't just, I don't trust in just anything. I don't even trust in other people. You know, I don't even trust the best friends who say that they're going to text me when they get home. They offered, they never text. I was like, I don't trust you at all. Like, and it's not like, oh, you're just a bad person. It's just, I don't, whatever you say, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. That's what it means. You have no integrity with me. That's what had happened when the Bible, the word of truth, okay, came to me. And I was readjusted knowing all those other truths. The other truths, they were beautiful in their time. But when this one happened, I realized what really happened. And then it was then allowed for me to be realized into it. And that was the awakening and all this like new knowledge and like how can I do that? And in hindsight, 2020, something really crazy, one huge synchronicity co coincidence that I could share with testimony with this is about the charming of the snake and then that golden serpent climbing up on the staff and then that's going to heal them, right? Okay, and the charming of the serpent and the seducius, like how we know and like about the Ophili Ophilius, whatever, the horoscope um, person, the one in the stars. Um, the he the healing guy. Uh, I was looking for something and I found a journal that was at the beginning of my spirit quest to find God. And this may sound crazy and off the wall, but one of my excerpts said, "I this morning I had <laughs> this morning I had brunch with a golden dragon." I asked him what I should order, and he asked me what I felt like having. I asked him, I don't, I'm not sure. And he said, then leave it up to fate. And then I said, I give you my fate. And then he ordered me a surprise. And I brunched, or at brunch, I ate the opus of the Cardinal song. Like what? So whatever that is, um, me and just creative writing. I don't remember writing that and I know that during that time I was in meditation like the Buddhism stuff, right? So like really clearing my mind and breath control So like golden dragon like maybe I don't know. I was it wasn't like I was like reading about golden dragons But then with that charming of the snake, it's like that that was My own personal testament to the charming of the snake. I was with a serpent the dragon a golden dragon <laughs> eating brunch talking story and then I charmed him enough for him to give me the surprise do you see like that's my life I, that's how I can accord it and that is a year before all this happened you know um, so in other words in order to be respectful and keep your crowns on when dealing with the influences of evil in the world and of what you would consider demons and what you would consider Satan uh, be always mindful that one the Lord is with you no one can be against you no man can do anything against you and uh, no darkness or principalities can ever harm you for two all you have to do is cry out to the Lord you are a child of God and his ear is attentive to your cry especially if you're scared that means you're breaking and that's what his eyes is always looking for people who are breaking that's who he's here for so those two are already for you. Three, the battle, the, the victory has already been won. Okay, so uh, in this instance, I'm gonna give you an example that I I started, and this is before I was even considering Jesus Christ. Yeah, and I was online, and there was a girl who made a video, and she was really scared. She got into, like, those numbers of the angels. I never really watched her video. I just watched uh, those videos. I only watched her video because she was crying. And she was like, don't do it because it makes these beings, and they're like, uh, they, they might be angels and spirit guides, but then they're demons. They're demons, and they're scary, like, and she's crying, you know? So I, I, I just went on a mission to help her, and, like, it was, <laughs> it was, like, a lot of writing. That was the first time I was, like, a commenter on YouTube. So what happened was, um... What I was telling her was the Lord uh, did not give you a spirit of fear. He gave you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Yeah. Um, know that. Know who is with you. You know, the Lord is God is with you. So be bold. Be strong. The Lord your God is with you. And then also, I was like, if you have been trying to summon God and you have not, 
you know, you tampered with the wrong thing and you were like the sorcerer's apprentice, right? You could do it, but then you were out of control. You weren't disciplined. You weren't mature enough for that kind of a big magic. And then it worked. And now you're freaking out. I was like, what if that was God? What you considered ugly, gross, vile, I'm feeling weird. That was God. But instead, he came just like how you asked. And since he wasn't what you expected, he was offended. Because you was like, ah! <laughs> like, you know, and God came. And that's the thing. You don't know what God looks like, but God, that's why God has to, must be everything. And in that sense, when I would be meditating, I was getting really good at clearing my mind. I, do, I would do these things to myself that I don't know why I do this to, my, to myself. But I'll be like, in that happy place, and I'll be like, I wonder what would happen if just Freddy Krueger just like popped into my mind. Like, why would I think that? That's so dumb. It's almost like I'm daring myself. But of course, like, Bleh! and I'll be like, Poof! like, oh, and then I would be scared. Like at that night, you know, I'd have like, oh my gosh, like what happened, you know, whatever. But then sometimes I'll be meditating and like, uh, you know, just like your brain sees things. And uh, whatever was forming and, you know, amalgamating and morphing, some, some of them look like sinister outlines. Like I, it could be scary. And I kept what I told that girl in my head. And I was like, this could be God because I don't know what God is, but I know that. God is everything, including what I want him to look like. And so when I was doing that, this weird face came into my head, okay? I know this sounds crazy, but it came into my head like real, real clear. But it was scary. It looked like a deformed monster, like a monster, like a bullhead monster. And so I took a deep breath and I was looking at it and it was like right there in my head. And I was just like, so I am a child of God. I was like, if you are God, then I'm Kaneki, and you know, I was like, and I respect you and all that stuff. And I was like, and if you are not God, know that I am a child of God and you are a creation of who I am a child of. And so I still respect you in the name of my father. That's what I did in my head. <laughs> and then that face, when I looked back up, it started like smoothing out. And the face changed right in front of me from this ugly demonic face to a beautiful face of light. And it wasn't bad or sinister. It was God knowing, maybe knowing me for the first time, even though I didn't, I didn't even, I wasn't through Jesus Christ yet. So it's kind of like that. When you change the way you look at things, the things that you see change, and you really are the creator of your own reality. If you're having these attacks and stuff no it's because there's something in you that is has that capability of making yourself feel that as well it's not just an outside thing and you're a victim yeah there's a sense of control and responsibility that you must take upon yourself because you have been given this power you have been given the power to take responsibility for it um and so that in that sense i encourage everybody when it comes to evil when it comes to battling demons and spiritual warfare you know, first and foremost, know who God is and know who you are. Yeah. And I'm not saying that what you go, what you go through is fake or that, oh, it's not just in my head. This really happened. Yes, I know. I've been attacked. I was just attacked the other day and I came up, teacher taught me how to do the Thing, uh, the weapon for the children of God and if you don't know it it's really simple when you feel anything you blast out like a trumpet um, and he will hear your call and so an example and this might get loud but it's you go I will call upon the keep trumpeting it out it displaces all the energy in the room like they know you're a child of God and God is there sometimes and when this happened to me like I in my other video I said thunder was all over the house like immediately boom 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 shaking the windows and like uh, it said it he comes in the thunder I was like oh my gosh it works and that's why I shared it with the world and I know it's si silly but I don't know if anyone's ever done that and it says uh, the Lord will save those who call upon him. It's simple and just and it's as simple as how he taught us in the Bible and he's just like get out of him like be gone, you know? Like uh, shut your mouth. It wasn't like some r long rant and like uh, chanting and all that stuff. And so that's what it is and 
remember who you are and know that you can do that and then figure out ways to charm it yourself because if you are a child of God and justified correctly and you know just learning in your growth that's all it's a learning process you have the ability because you have the love and love it never fails it's the most powerful force in all the omniverses universes it's omnidimensional omnipresent omni omniscient right it's God God is love and God is also an all-consuming fire yeah and so passion is a big thing and compassion is a huge thing and if you in consideration if you think about like the devil as like a fire 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 he probably is if he's the imitation of God who is an all-consuming fire but if you are from God and not the devil then you are the fire that eats fire you are the snake that has charmed the snake because you already have the power of being the charmer yeah and it benefits you in the end if that's why like the my child prayer I pray that God and the devil will become friends <laughs> you know and like it the, what the devil did like that he'll say sorry and God will be like okay and then everything will be okay it's as simple as that you have to come as a peacemaker even to the, that which seems to be emotionally hindering and then that right there is you crucifying you in your head to not look at something and be like oh like this is happening to me I'm a victim but become more than conquerors because you will be of the living hope yeah so that's what I wanted to share with everybody and I hope that brought some a little bit clarity about a different method that might be now established in your own personal growth as we do go through the darker you know the darker darkness and getting towards the uh, the point that the crescendo of what is happening now goes into the end times the end of the generation the end of the uh, contract or the yeah the covenant of love to a thousand generations yeah and um, in that sense doing it differently too instead of repeating the same thing over and over again over again expecting different results um, this could be a, a good key for certain people out there that have the potential to learn, know how to combat in the saintly way. Yeah? Um, that's why I don't say that I'm a soldier of the light. I say that I'm a warrior. And because with a warrior, that's their number one rule. When battling monsters, always be careful not, never to become one. Yeah? It's like if, yeah, so <laughs> that's what I wanted to impart and I hope that made sense and you don't think I'm all crazy now because of that, that was creative writing <laughs> with the golden dragon. So I, I hope everyone is doing well and blessed be the Lord, for real, it's amazing. Keep striving for the truth, it will set you free. Be persistent, be like the persistent widow if you must, just keep going. It will, it will happen for you, and even if it seems like it's not happening for you, I encourage you. That is when just that little bit of extra will get you to that point. Because it's when you want to give up and you finally give up everything that you do. Not give up like oh I stopped trying, but giving up trying to figure it out, kind of thing. In honesty, sincerity, and correctly justified by just like the basics, right? That's when it happens for you. So be persistent and keep bugging it. Keep going because this is the opportunity and one-time chance, I believe. I know. We all know this, yeah? Everything is coming into reality. It's becoming realistic. And so with those matters of fact coming in that never used to happen, but there's nothing new under the sun. There's a shift. There's a new sky. There's a, going to be a new... We're in the period of a, the transition between the old and the new. That's why all the planets are on one side. Nothing new under the sun. Because everything new is above it. Like, And everything's above it. Like, So it's like just know that, that bigger picture. Now is the time to do things like this. And that's why all these new thoughts are coming out too. Because he just poured his spirit on everybody. And if you have been justified correctly when he did that pouring of that spirit of that awesome power, 
that would have amalgamated in you and given you like a boost almost in your growth. But if you didn't amalgamate correctly, that would give you a boost in uh, growth that wasn't ready. And then you find people who are trumpeting out and talking um, about all these crazy stuff that don't really accord. It doesn't accord to just the basic truth. And But what they're saying is very truth. It's truth. It happened to them. They had these visions. They had these dreams. They had these encounters. But see, that's the reason why he poured out his spirit. Because by the judgment... Judgment is not going to be by God and be like, you there, you there. Not at all. Judgment is on us, each and every single individual. And it's going to be by the words that you, by the words that you say, that's your, going to be your judgment. You know, your, your judgment is going to be what you say and what you write pretty much. And so it's like when these people are talking all out loud and feeling it in their heart and they have this zeal that's driving them and they need to trump it out and they're out of accordance that's them telling on themselves, pretty much. And that's the reason his fear got poured out, because that's the method that it's going to be for separating. You know, so like they don't know that. And that's why with the Book of Wisdom, it says, even silence will make a fool look wise. So even in this time, if you have a vision and stuff, I encourage you not to just start blasting it out on YouTube for everyone to hear in 100%. Maybe maybe one person or two per people just to get a an understanding from them and people that you trust to be to know the truth yeah and the word of god are, and or will at least help you to figure out it because the last thing you want to do is trump it out in plain english in your own factual truth that you are in fact not in truth you know um and look wise during that time and then figure out where you are because then it will also show in your own spiritual development what how better and best to comprehend the new dimensions of thinking and insights that the word of truth which is never going to end and it's omnidimensional omni omniversal you know omniscient omni omnipresent type of truths in dimensions so it always gets bigger and bigger as you get better and better and bigger and bigger um it will help you to justify into that new thought even if it's a small little nook that gets you there you took the time you persevered that's repentance you didn't just blast it out thinking that oh this is uh uh this is what i've been waiting for or this uh, you know what i mean uh like, for instance, like when things happened to me that was so in accordance to what everyone has been trying to do, the, fir the, uh, f the first thing I wanted to do was to start blasting it out on YouTube. I've never had a YouTube channel, nor never did I want to, ever. But this was, I was like, the world needs to know this, you know? But then I didn't, and I didn't for a long time. I didn't even tell anybody. I told two people who are close to me. No, one person who was close to me, and the other person was a... Uber driver that I've never met, seen before, but it was an hour long Uber and I, it was like right during that time. So I was <laughs> in the zeal of it, but it took me a while, a long, long time to just be like, you know, did anyone have this rapture thing happen to them yet? Like, and I don't even call it rapture, but see, in that sense, uh, everything that happened to me, it accorded to the truth. So I'm like, okay, something's happening here. But, however, if I had proclaimed it out loud and it wasn't in the truth, and then later on I looked and then it wasn't in the truth and all the comments were like, oh, that couldn't happen because blah, 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 and I had no other comeback because they were in the truth, then I would have just revealed myself that I was, that was my judgment. By my words, I will be judged. Yeah? So, that's kind of like an example you can kind of use there, of course. <laughs> um, so, once again, I come in the name of the Lord and I hope everyone's having a good day. Enough babbling. Sorry. <laughs> Take care.